Здравствуйте, люди! Всем привет, люди! Hello, everybody! Меня зовут Казак Этман. My name is Казак Этман. И сегодня поговорим об что был Казак. Today we'll be talking about what is or what was a Казак. Now, this is a very huge and intricate topic. Uh, with an almost 500 year history, the Cossacks themselves and what it means to be a Cossack have changed drastically throughout time. So I plan to make many videos on each and every different time period. Uh, the hosts, which are the tribes, as you'll come to learn, the weapons, um, like the evolution of their weapons going from, for example, uh, using Turkic uh, shamshirs and uh, scimitars to the actual like Cossack designed shaska as many people know it um, the techniques uniforms all of these things I will elaborate and show these vast changes and evolutions uh, throughout history and what this rich history is so I plan on making many videos of that stay tuned for that I cannot possibly cover all things Cossack dumb Cossackdom, the entire history of it, in one video. It would not do any of it justice, and in fact, uh, I'll probably end up failing like many people and historians and documentaries have in the past with try trying to uh, solidify it and put it uh, too much into a, a short amount of time. For today's video, it's going to be a little bit different, uh, planning on doing uh, pictures and voiceover. Uh, for this video because otherwise you're just going to have have to listen to me ramble for a little bit of time and I don't think that will be as fun or as entertaining as it is if I put some interesting imagery to help uh, set some context for some things that I'm going to be talking about plus there's a lot of great images out there that I'd like to share and uh, get get some credit to some awesome artists uh, as well so I think uh, that way it'll be a lot more fun for all of us okay so let us without further ado let us get started now I want to provide a strong basic understanding and summary of what is a Cossack because most historians and many documentaries and YouTubers have fallen short of providing a proper classification and description. Um, before we start, I want to first and foremost express that this is a topic that I have a lot of passion about and have dedicated most of my academic career and experience to creating as unbiased and as reflective an analysis as possible for. That's why I want to share this with you because I truly believe I offer something that others don't. Even though, you know, I of course being a Cossack, uh, you know, would be more likely to assume a bias, I do my very best not to because it means that much to me. Now let's get on with the fun stuff. An important place to start is with the word Kozak or Cossack, as this links into the role or function of what a Cossack is or was. The etymology of the word Cossack is somewhat debated in regards to whether or not it was used as a descriptor to, to, to describe someone who was a wanderer, adventurer, or lawless slash masterless man, or if the word itself actually just means free man or wanderer. Furthermore, uh, the word Kozak and these meanings that I just described to you come um, from the Turkic language group. So it is Turkic in origin. Uh, it is also related to the country Kazakhstan um, in terms of Kazakhstan also having Turkic origins and roots and uh, the meaning of Kazakhstan uh, could be translated colloquially into land of the wanderers. However, there's no relation between Kozaks and Kazakhs, uh, the inhabitants of Kazakhstan, except for colonialization period where the Kozaks uh, colonized Kazakhstan for the Russian Empire. But that's an entire different topic altogether. The main important part uh, is just to remember that Kozak uh, the meaning is still debated, however, it's Turkic in origin, but nonetheless, there's a consensus on um, the meaning of or the description of it as a wanderer or a lawless or, f or free man of some sort. 
So this word, kozak, starts being used to describe peoples living in a no-man's land, uh, which is an area of modern central Ukraine. And it was sandwiched in between um, four factions, three large empires being the, Pol the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, the Principality of Moscovy, which would later be the Russian Empire, and the, and the Ottoman Empire. And then one smaller conglomerate, and the smaller conglomerate being the Crimean Khanate, or the, you know, colloquially, that's the Tartars. So these men and women were fleeing serfdom um, in the early 1600s. Some scholars debate that it was also uh, end of the 1500s, early 1600s. So depending on, on sources and depending on uh, the arguments made and whatnot. But however, at least we know around this time period, uh, mainly uh, they were men as well as women and families uh, fleeing serfdom um, from these big empires, from uh, Moscow, especially from the Ottoman Empire, uh, where there was a, a very big slave trade going out of uh, Kaffa, uh, which is uh, an old city, or the, the old name for a city, um, in uh, the Crimea, or Krym. So these men and women were fleeing serfdom, a uh, big empire, and trying to establish their own unique lifestyle and communities away from all of these major factions. I will dedicate a video discussing this on the early Cossacks, for now, it's important to understand this is where the word Kozak comes from and when it starts being ascribed to and used by a specific group of people in this region. Finally, the answer to the question we've all been waiting for, what is a Cossack? I'll be giving you the most basic, boiled down, bare bones um, definition of what a Cossack is based off of qualities and attributes that stay constant throughout their 500 year history. So, a Cossack could be described as a light irregular troop, either infantry or cavalry. In their inception, Cossacks were more renowned as light irregular infantry before uh, they were known as renowned horsemanship. That's because the horsemanship skills and uh, development in shock cavalry tactics and their irregular cavalry tactics um, come later after a long um, relationship with Crimean Tartars and that will be described like I said in the other video discussing the early Cossacks. So this is the big question uh, or this is a big answer to the question uh, that many people ask you know what is a Cossack? So essentially the easiest answer is a light irregular troop and I believe historians lose sight of this a lot because they get lost in the bigger question of who are or who were the Cossacks. Beyond this, beyond being a light irregular troop, uh, other qualities that can be ascribed to what is a Cossack is uh, a warrior uh, whose fighting skills are grounded in Sistema. Sistema is not a martial art, it is a military combative like Krav Maga. And Sistema is said to derive from Druzhinya. Uh, the Druzhinya were late medieval period Eastern Knights, very akin to um, the Western Knight Errants. Uh, the training has always been very harsh throughout its history. Early Cossack initiations during uh, the Zaporozhne period of time had individuals swimming across the Dnieper River uh, nearby the Sich. And the Dnieper River is very big and very strong river. So to swim across it would take tremendous skill and strength and endurance. Um, likewise, the Cossack Hopak dance style uh, originally originated as a form of military drills and exercises to keep one strong and fit and flexible. I believe comically that there may be some Spartans among the Chimerian Greek remnants in Crimea who are responsible for this sadistic hardcore training. In fact, a Venetian envoy once compared the Cossacks to the Spartans. This republic, the Zaporozhian Sich, could be compared to the Spartan if the Cossacks respected sobriety as highly as did the, as did the Spartans. <clears throat> 
So I believe that is the easiest boil it down bare bones answer is that a Cossack is a light irregular troop whose fighting skills are grounded in Sistema. That is the easiest, calmest, shortest description of what is a Cossack. If you're looking to get your hands on uh, some interesting insights into what Cossacks were in different periods of time uh, before I make my other videos describing uh, said periods of time, there's some pretty good sources out there so far. Um, ones that I recommend would be uh, the BBC did a little short video on Zaporozhian Cossacks um, and that uh, really d showcases some of the techniques, uh, weaponry, and equipment and training that they had and did during this time period, uh, especially now that in Ukraine there's large reenactment groups and reconstructionist groups uh, that are funded by um, some of the highest institutions, universities, and international communities for developing these techniques as well as um, reviving them. Um, the Great War uh, channel also did a really good uh, short series of videos uh, describing um, post-imperial and Soviet descriptions of Russian Cossacks, as well as uh, his one video did a very good job of explaining the origins and construction of Cossack society, but mainly from the Russian narrative and how they then became Russian. Uh, I'm not sure if perhaps he was unfamiliar with um, the Ukrainian narrative and the Western Cossack hosts, but um, or if he just chose to focus on the Russian ones given uh, his channel and um, the focus of how it would tie in to uh, World War I. Um, but nonetheless, he does a really good job of hitting some really important points uh, there, and I highly recommend checking it out, and I'll leave all the, the links in the description below. And finally, uh, the last video that's worth uh, checking out is Times of Ukraine. Um, this is a Ukrainian video. Uh, however, you could take the citations and get a rough Google Translate off of them. Obviously, it'll probably be very comical, the English translation. Um, but it is very uh, a very well done and conceived video, and it's very analytical, and it showcases a lot of different battles and characters that aren't typically mentioned in both Russian historiography and the Western historiography. However, there is a pretty strong Ukrainian nationalist narrative. Um, however, that could be interesting for those of you wanting to know what that narrative is. Uh, so just be careful with that, but also uh, I hope that you'd find it interesting nonetheless. So I'll also leave a link for that. Uh, now that um, that's everything to do with what is a Cossack. Uh, the real big question and the real debate uh, that's going on that forms the plethora of narratives is who were the Cossacks? Who are Cossacks? Oh, the Russian historical narrative would have you believe that Cossacks are distinctly and ethnically Russians, that they are national warriors with indomitable spirits whose adventures and exploits are things of legend uh, worthy of folklore, song, and dance, and tied in intrinsically with Russian nationalism and character. However, the, the Western narrative uh, is slightly better in terms of representing the type of diversity that was present in Cossack uh, culture and history in terms of uh, many different uh, races and religions and people from many different backgrounds and countries being able to join and be co and serve as Cossacks um, and the general non-linearity throughout their 500 year history. So these are the main big differences between the Western narrative and the Russian um, historical narrative. Um, and I think a, a good scholar who really describes um, the difficulty in describing and classifying Cossacks is Lester Grau. And Lester Grau says, uh, it is difficult to generalize about their past as they have been freemen, oppressive tools of a, an oppressive Tsar, earthy libertines, pioneer adventurers, ruthless conquerors, infamous plunderers, defenders of the faith, 
leaders of every significant revolt against the Tsar from 1600 to 1800, light cavalrymen, pirates, fishermen, trappers, herdsmen, and farmers. So I think that's a really good description um, and easy way to truly summarize just the difficulty and dangers in making a generalized narrative of the Cossacks from the... So I want to showcase my own narrative on trying to help showcase who were the Cossacks. So traditionally, around the time of their inception, a Cossack was a person who only had to swear an oath to defend uh, the land that, uh, that they were establishing in that no man's land that I had mentioned earlier. Uh, so they had to swear an oath to defend this land and the Orthodox faith. Uh, as long as they did that, they were considered a Cossack. Uh, and because of this, there ended up being many unregistered Cossacks. Uh, and then this led to a lot of banditry and horrible uh, acts being committed in the name of Cossack Dam, or being a Cossack. Uh, and this especially was showcased during the Polish-Lithuanian Civil War uh, and the Klemensky Uprising later on. Um, so this causes a lot of problems all over the board and gives bad names to Cossacks. Uh, when you have just a lot of unregistered units roaming free and uh, not representing the ideals or representing the official um, Cossack hetmanate or the the first proto-Cossack state uh, that had arisen. And this puts jeopardy to um, relations, international relations. So, uh, for example, your alliance with uh, the Principality of Moscovy, the Tartars, the Ottomans, uh, the Poles. So it became really important very quickly to have registered and official units and divisions of Cossacks. Otherwise, um, bandit groups or um, bandit groups or units set up by uh, your rival factions could commit atrocities and blame it on you. And of course you don't want that to happen. So this is what eventually leads to the establishment of distinct hosts. They start developing their own unique cultural customs and traditions. And this is what turns them more into their own unique sort of tribes. Uh, and they were responsible for operating out of specific geographical regions. Most of the Cossack hosts their names are derived off of the rivers that they would set up their encampments upon, or their cities upon later on. Uh, these were, were called stanitsas. We can get into this in another video, like I said. But for example, just a quick couple examples, Bug Cossacks based on the, Bu the Bug River, Kuban Cossacks based on the, the Kuban region in the Caucasus, Rostov-on-Don based off of the Don River and the city Rostov-on-Don. Um, and it goes on and on. So this then, having these distinct and established uh, hosts or tribes, then it further develops, as I said, their own unique cultural customs, traditions, and this boils down into uh, de more developed ideas about what a Cossack should be, how they should conduct themselves. And then this is what le leads into creating uh, a warrior code and a code of honor and um, code of conduct and this was known as Kod Kozak. Some tribes still adhere to it today. Uh, many have lost it just throughout time and dilution um, and quite a few of the newer um, established Cossack hosts that were es uh, established or created by the Russian Imperial uh, time period as well as the Soviet time period and as well as the modern Russian time period uh, they're set up by the government and a lot of those uh, Cossacks were not quote-unquote ethnically or did not come from traditional Cossack families from the initial um, group of people that established the original Cossacks in the no man's land that I mentioned earlier and this is where we see a pretty big divide and it causes a lot of interesting conversation again for a later date and another video. So for the meantime let's quickly cap all of this off again. 
So, a Kozak is a light irregular infantry or cavalry warrior with a constructed code of honor, or at least, at the very least, a thirst for freedom, self-governance, democracy, living in a self-established semi-military community. Like I said, I won't dare delve into the complex and long history of the Cossacks in this video, but I'll list the major time periods that we will cover in future videos in order for you to have the context of what or who the Cossacks were and what we're going to be talking about in the future. Um, so I think uh, another good scholar who sums up key important time periods is Peter Burns and I'll put a link to uh, some of his work in, in the description below. So he sums it up beautif beautifully if you want a quick overview. So it is, you got the Klemensky uprising, you got the Ruin, the Mazepa uprising, and the Benderi constitution, which is going to be a really cool video and something that is very interesting to study. Um, and I'll explain that in, in another video. So yeah, uh, then the destruction of the Sich and the assimilation into the Russian Empire, colonialization, uh, frontiersmen, and frontier settlement, oppressive tools and honor guards of the Tsar, wealthy landowners, post-imperial period, civil war period, World War I, World War II, Soviet oppression, survival, revival after the fall of the 1990s, and the current contemporary period. So thank you very much for watching this video, especially if you watched all the way through. I know this is a lot to process. Believe me, writing academia on this is very exhausting. Also, teaching this has proven to be a very great challenge. And why I don't fault many documentaries, teachers, or historians who do attempt to do it in one shot and fail. In fact, that is probably the main reason that they do, and why I have been very hesitant uh, on creating this video. And I've had to do it multiple times. So um, I'll probably still not be happy with putting this one out or with uh, how this video has turned out. But uh, I really appreciate your patience and believe me, um, any comments below, constructive criticisms, uh, much appreciated uh, to get more focused and better in future videos. And I hope that my future videos will be where I can truly shine and showcase some of the, this rich history and complex history. <laughs> so, as always, brothers and sisters, strength, strength and honor, Silly Chespa. Baka.